All right, let's go ahead and do the handle. This far it should be easier. We're going to start with a cylinder. And uh, before I forget, I hope that you're saving your work. I think I forgot to mention that in the last video, but you should save every half hour or so. So I'm doing a similar process. This time I'm starting off with a cylinder and I scaled it down. And notice that as I scaled it down, I scaled it down uniformly by using this middle scale tool, right? If I were to scale down this way and then that way, it's gonna take it out of uh, being circular. So you don't wanna do that. So I scale using this. The, um, the cylinder has an input. If I go to channel box layer editor, click on underneath inputs where it says poly cylinder one, click on that. You'll see this round cap. Uh, I can turn that on Oops. Uh, on. And then if I add subdivisions in the caps, so let's say I have four here, you'll see that I get this sort of pill shape, right? So that's great. And we kind of want that for the bottom. It is too, you know, dramatic right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to vertex mode, select all these, and then use the scale tool to kind of bring them close together. So again, what I did there is after using the um, rounded cap, turning that on, so we'll go to vertex mode, select all those verts, and then you know start adjusting them. And notice how that's looking pretty good. Um, let's see. This top looks pretty flat up there, so I'll take all these and I'll go to the scale tool and I'll just scale it into itself so it's flat like that. All right, so there is perspective in this image, so it's likely that this isn't quite as round as it is being displayed right now. It's probably quite a bit flatter, but I'm just gonna keep it round for now. So what we're gonna do is, let's see. I'm gonna go to edge mode, double click on this edge loop, hold shift, click on this edge loop and this edge loop, and I'm going to delete them. Whenever you delete an edge, most of the time you need to hold control and then hit delete. The reason why is if you do not, the vertices that are attached to that edge will still be around. So for example, if I hit delete right now without holding control and I go to vertex mode, you'll see here are all these vertices that were attached to that, to those edges that I deleted. And now each one of these faces is an end gone because Every time there's a vertice, vertex in on an edge, it splits the edge. So even though this edge is not changing direction, there's actually one, two, three, four edges here, right? So if a, this is a nine-sided polygon. So that's a bunch of n-gons here. So I'm gonna go back and back to edge mode select all these right then hold control and then hit delete if you've done that correctly you'll see that if you go to vertex mode there are no vertices here uh, i'm going to select this upper edge because i don't want to mess with this i don't like this shading right here so i'm going to select that upper edge and go to mesh display um, harden edge and that should fix it all right i'm going to go to face mode select all these faces here. Then I'm going to extrude. The shortcut for extrude is control E. I could also come in here and click extrude. Then I'll click and drag left and right on the word thickness and bring this up like this. And I'll use offset to scale it in. And we're going to make this nice and round here in a little while. Uh, then I will hit control E to extrude again and use the word thickness and I'll bring this I'm actually going to bring this up all the way to here and bring it in a bit then I'll extrude again and I'll use offset Thickness, bring this up, extrude again, bring this up like so. 
All right, so I'm going to add some edge loops here. So I'm going to hit Control Shift X, and I want an edge loop in here. So I'm going to hold Control. here. Then I'm going to take this edge, hit W. I'm going to move it kind of more like this. And I'm going to bevel and add a couple segments and play with the fractions. Point, point 0.4 looks pretty good. So it dips in right here, as you can see. So I'm going to take an edge, add an edge loop here and I want one in the middle here. So I'm gonna hold control and then hold control and middle mouse click and it'll drop it exactly in the middle. Then I can select this edge loop and scale it in a bit like this uniformly. And I'll take this edge loop, bevel it, decrease the fraction, add a segment, this one, bevel it, decrease the fraction, add a segment, that looks pretty good. This edge needs to be larger, something like this. And then I'm gonna drop an edge loop so control shift X to get the multi-cut tool, drop an edge loop here, one here, one in the middle, one in the middle. And again, I'm doing the middle by holding control and middle mouse clicking, and it drops one in the edge. So I'll select this edge, hit R to go to the scale tool, scale this in. Actually, I'm gonna do these at the same time because it looks like they're the same size. So I'm gonna select those and scale them in. And I want the bevel to be the same as well, so I'll bevel them at the same time too. Go to the segment, and this one, and this one. Actually, these two will have the same bevel. The other one might be a little different, so I'm gonna bevel this. I'll hit G to bevel again. This one's a bit rounder like that. So there is a different material here and I'm gonna capture this in the texture. So I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, this I need to worry about though. So I'm gonna select this and I'm actually gonna hit W and move it up a bit. And I'll bevel this. This bevel will be a little more subtle because it's kind of tight. And then I'll select. It looks like the bottom bevel is different than this top bevel. Bevel, so I'll select the bottom edge, decrease the fraction, and leave it at one segment for now. I'll select this top edge, bevel that, increase the fraction, and give it um, another segment. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at our reference. So it's looking like we might be getting a little skinny up here. Let's use the scale tool and just kind of play with this. It goes something like this. And this. I could come through and scale this a little bit better, but I think I'm going, I think, well, yeah, let's, let's scale it up to make it wider like this and then scale it down to match up again. So when I scaled it up, I scaled it uniformly and then I use the scale. So it's, let's see, it's going to tweak this a little. Okay. Looks pretty good. So let's line these up so they're in the center with each other. So I'm gonna um, go to panels, orthographic, top. I'm 
And with this, uh, with the top piece selected, I'm going to, actually with the bottom piece, let's do the bottom piece first. So I'm going to um, snap it to the grid and I want to snap it to this point here, so I'm going to hold X and click and drag and snap it in both directions. And this one, we do the same thing, snap it in both directions. And now you can see they're lined up. Let's see what this looks like when we go to Smooth Preview. Change this back to side, smooth preview. So I do want to smooth this. What I'm mostly seeing is just that this kind of rounds out a bit too much. So in general, I think it's just rounded out a little too much. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to select these three edge loops. And just kind of tuck them in a little. And I'll do the same thing with this one, something like this. And then these three edge loops. I'm going to scale up a little like this, just a, just a little bit. So if I full screen this by hitting spacebar, and I select both pieces and hit one, you'll see that you know these have not actually been smoothed. Um, and I'm getting some shading errors here from just the bridge. I wanna fix that. There's a bunch of things I can do. When I smooth it, it should fix it by itself. So uh, let's save our work. And say screwdriver version three, save. All right. <clears throat> the next step is to actually smooth this. And before we do that, I'm going to organize my scene a little. So what I want to do is name this top piece and I'll just name this um, S for screwdriver and bit. And this bottom one, I'll name it S for screwdriver and handle. Now I want to keep these separate. Uh, for baking later, which we'll get into. Uh, I will select both pieces and hit Control G. And what that does is it creates a group. You can see in the outliner, it says group one. If I s open it up by clicking on the little plus icon, you'll see, oh, there's S bit and there's S handle. So these pieces are still separate. They're just grouped together. Meaning that if I click on the group here, it's gonna select both and then I can move it around, right? Um, or do whatever I want to it. So I'm gonna name this um, screwdriver um, unsmooth. Or actually, no, I'll just name it screwdriver um, for now. And then what I wanna do, I'm gonna select this group again and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm gonna hit Control D to duplicate. And then I'll hit W and move it to the side. And this one, I'm going to select it and I'm gonna rename this to underscore screwdriver underscore smooth. And with it selected, I'm gonna click on this smooth button. And you'll see I get this uh, divisions. If you end up cranking this up, you could crash your computer. So you just wanna make sure you save before you smooth and play with this. But smooth preview is actually a preview of two divisions. So I'm just gonna change that to two so I get the same thing as my smooth preview. We'll talk more about sub D modeling and smoothing and topology and all that in a different um, lesson. All right, let's see. So for each piece, I'm going to freeze the transformations on this. And for screwdriver, this one, I'm going to create a new layer with it in it. And I'll, oops, I'll rename that layer to um, S underscore uns, unsmooth. And I'm gonna turn the view for that off. 
this one, screwdriver smooth, I'm going to do the same thing. This one I'll rename to S underscore uh, smooth, save, and then I'll hit W, select the group, and I will grid snap it to the center again, and I will freeze the trans select each piece and freeze the transformations. And then I'm going to delete my history. So let's see if I can. Whenever you're modeling, you create um, construction history, and you can see that history here in the channel box, right? Like inputs, poly tweak, poly bevel, poly split. Um, we want to get rid of all this just to have a nice clean scene. So in order to do that, um, I'm going to go to edit, delete all by type and history. And you'll see that if I select these pieces, there are no more inputs exist. So the history has been deleted. All right, so I think we're at a really good spot. I'm gonna save it again now that I cleaned up the scene and have everything named and grouped. So save scene as, I'm gonna name this as version four. And again, it's a good idea to always save before you smooth. In the next video, we will talk about UV unwrapping, UV unwrap this, and then we can proceed on to texturing. See you there.